My name is Matt Piper. I'm the host of Dialogue Discussions and Digressions. And on this podcast, we're going to be talking to Ben Stamper. This is my first feeling, if you will, as the watcher, as the experiencer. Ben Stamper is a formidable and certified fitness coach. He's also delving into work with spirituality. I now have a sense that God, or at the very least, the idea of God is collective human consciousness. And somebody who I can call a friend as well. We talk about our upbringing, a little bit of the old days in Boy Scouts as well as show choir, but we delve into where we left off, kind of catching up where we didn't see each other for quite some time and how both of us have grown considerably. And today we're discussing how Ben Stamper found his form of spirituality while also his purpose and his mission. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and please share it. Please subscribe. And for people who are subscribed to my newsletters, you will be receiving podcasts far earlier than when I will post it up to the public. So with that, I'll see you there. Ben has been a longtime friend, uh, refound our friendship, and now we kind of run together, work out together sometimes. Um, but he's been on his whole own journey that like oh. has been very curious for me. That like I'm like, I want to know more about like what you've gone through and kind of a little, you know, go diving back into like who you are yeah. uh, before we even met. And we also like that space in between. So I remember we met in choir. Was that it? I, no, I think it's Boy Scouts. Technically speaking, the first time that we met was oh Boy my Scouts. Gosh, yeah. It was, I knew your brother first, your older brother. Yes. And because uh, we were in the same troop and you were the little brother that would like hang out with us. Right? <laughs> yeah, because that's it. Yeah, because you're the same age as yeah. your brother. So. I was always wanting to play like magic, right? <laughs> were, were we always playing magic the gathering? Our game. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was that was back then. Um, yeah, I think I think you were around twelve. I was fourteen, so oh like my early God. teens. Yeah, right. Um, and then we ended up going to high school and being in choir together. So, um, <laughs> were you in show choir too? I was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I was in swinging concert for yes um, the latter three years of high school, and um, yeah, no, you you were in right afterwards. You were that. You were oh, okay. That, yeah, okay, yeah, and then you graduated. Like we didn't perform together with swing, right? Also, swing swing choir is uh, basically this like group of eight people. I think it was like yeah. four four girls, four boys, and we. It's basically more choreography like, based. Yeah, it was I showy. Think like Sixteen, like eight and eight. Maybe. Okay, but yeah, but regardless, yeah, it was, yeah, it was more showy. We it wasn't just you know standing on your your bleachers and singing. It was, <laughs> it was the singing and dancing, you know, putting on a show, and, right? And trying to perform more. Uh, <laughs> something I definitely lost and got more anxious with throughout the years. Oh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was a great time. We did that, and then we were in theater together too. We did a right. bit of that, so we were more into the uh, performative side mm -hmm. of our creative arts. Uh, you definitely kept up with it and performed super well. Uh, love seeing you in your show recently, but uh, oh. yeah, man. So, so for a, a note for uh, people who are watching this, yeah. and also for listeners, right? Right now, we're in full workout mode attire yeah. um i got my hat i should probably maybe i should turn it back no nah, i'm not gonna turn it back yeah. <laughs> get the leg back on my face <laughs> but um we're currently at the public library so thank you public libraries support your public library support your library and uh yeah so we're just in full workout mode attire because what did we just come back from uh we just finished up my kettlebell cardio class so i teach fitness classes um i've been uh, teaching this for almost two years now so this has just been a very exciting thing for my Myself, hmm. uh, and uh, I'm glad that you got to try it out for the first time. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was really cool. It was <laughs> yeah, so you did my first one. Doing your it was a wonderfully intimate group. Like it was like yeah. only a few people. Like we were able to kind of like get it like into the nitty gritty with it. Oh, yeah. It was nice and fun to kind of just like okay, like you were able to focus on yeah. you know technique with people, which was nice. So and, and I yeah. lose that even with larger crowds. I mean, I Good. used to. Uh, teach this class before I had a broken collarbone. I used to teach this class in the in a larger studio and uh, had about twenty to twenty five people. That was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Oh, wow. Vibe though. Totally. Um, so yeah, I, I like the smaller crew. The smaller crew uh, could 
get a bit more into the form and almost teach it like I would my personal training clients. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's pretty fun. So, okay. Let's go back. Also, um, let's talk a little bit about, I feel like we got a nice intro for you. Um, but like, I want to go back into kind of like you growing up and how you, uh, came to be where you are right now. Sure. So, you know, growing up, I was more of the hyperactive, do what I want kind of kid. Um, definitely the one who where everyone was running in one way, I would run the opposite direction because <laughs> I thought it was fun. I loved taking that separate path. Um, and that's something I definitely kept up with throughout, throughout life, throughout fitness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, basically just my overall philosophy, if you will. Um, I kind of like that idea of, of bushwhack right uh, oh yeah from from uh cool. from boy scouts right you know just creating <laughs> your own path and i more or less did a lot of that um with with my interests and uh on through you know whenever my uh, my folks would um uh, kind of more or less force me down a path i felt wrong and uh we can get to that later i'll, I'll for sure dig into that but sure. I wrong and I, I noticed that dissonance if you will to where I would break away. And uh, that, that was always a freeing thing for me. So having that fresh start, you know, was always what I loved. I loved the adrenaline and the excitement around building something new. And then I just have continued to do so in a similar direction, almost just rather than going straight down the line and having a more focused approach, which definitely is, you know, the straightest path. Yeah. I like to think of it as uh, I've got my bumpers and so long as I'm staying within those bumpers, the more I narrow it, the wider space I can cover. So mm. I just always have that philosophy through life. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, when you went from high school to, did you go to college? Yes. Mm -hmm. But also no. Sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually what was interesting there was right after high school, and this is kind of where you and I stopped, uh, you know, our, our, closeness we stopped uh, contacting each other was because after high school um i wanted to take a year off school i mm. didn't know what i wanted to do and which is solid totally yeah. Valid. yeah um i mean if education is not goal oriented it's not education yeah very fair university uni is a super expensive mistake if you don't have focus right so right uh, I want to take a year off, but my parents are a bit more old school in that sense. Um, and you know, September rolls around, it's past enrollment and, um, no shade on to them, but cause of course they wanted what was best for me. Um, but you know, they sat me down and said, if you're not going to school, then your only other option is the military mm -hmm. or you'll amount to nothing. And mm -hmm. uh, that shattered me. So in tears, I drove to the recruitment office and uh, said, get me out of here. So mm -hmm. within less than 30 days, and if you're aware, um, that's a very fast uh, pulley period, you know, kind of where you're in that three stages uh, before you get to recruitment. Uh, oh, okay. Less than 30 days is, is very fast to get out. Usually it takes people about three to six months before they get into an actual uh, recruitment program, if you will, gotcha. uh, regardless of your branch. So I was gone uh, within a month and I was in Paris Island uh, for the Marine Corps. Um, so didn't want to be there, uh, but I didn't want to be home. Just trying to figure something out. Um, mm. Wasn't necessarily my idea to join the military. Um, and of course, I have my reservations personally about that. But regardless, um, got in, did the work and have a lot of fun stories from that piece. Um, so I was, you know, Paris Island, original Marine, but got also got the opportunity to then fly out to California. And I lived there for about a few months mm. for my school of infantry. Um, so I was in the Camp Pendleton area doing my, doing my training to be an assault man, shot rockets, played with C4 and deck cord. Oh my gosh. Was fun. I was, <laughs> it was great. In an outside <laughs> circumstance, I'm sure. Yeah. But, um, so that was super fun. Uh, but. The idea was to go into the military, join the reserves, so that way I could go to school and possibly do an officer program. Because mm. um, I figured, you know, if I'm going to do something, uh, I, I do want to go to school. I just didn't know what. So I might as well try an officer program, see where I can go. And at the time, I had a really big interest in space. So mm. join the reserves. I was stationed in a Columbus unit, so I got to stay home. Um, 
It was actually my unit, uh, 325 Lima Company, that was the first one in Iraq when they left. Um, so when I joined the unit, which was a few years after that, um, they were still kind of recovering and getting their units back or getting their oh. people back from uh, from a lot of losses. Oh, wow. So wasn't as hard for as some of the guys who joined uh, before me. Right, right. But, they still kind of had that edge and you had, you got to meet and speak to those people who went over to Iraq, who, who had a lot of, a lot of, uh, issues so uh -huh. from that, losing a lot of friends and, and it's a very tough situation. Yeah. Um, but to that end, um, you know, I joined the unit and, uh, tried to go to school. So I'm in the military while still working a full-time job as a server and bartender while I was home. Um, did I know that life. <laughs> no, no, I did that for about two, two and a half years. Uh, and then also tried to go to school full time um, in astronomy and astrophysics. Wow. Um, yeah. And then moved into astronautical engineering, trying to try that out. And then eventually leaving after a semester. Um, couldn't hang. There was a lot of a lot of workload. So I figured, you know, I might as well just get through as much as I can, try to find some balance in life uh, while still not just building a military career and a school career, but also building life at home. Um, yeah. So genuinely the focus was all over the place again, trying to have those wide blinders and then just narrowing it from there. Right. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, after that was my, my college experience. And that was 2016 when I tried. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm long story short about the military, just to finish that, tie that up. Sure. Um, after about three years of being in, um, I got really, really suicidal with it. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind me kind of yeah. diving into that one. Um, they took me to a, again, I was never deployed. I'm not trying to put that out there, mm -hmm. but uh, I went to a training in Michigan uh, at a base where the targets we were shooting at were dressed up to look like people. Mm. Um, and while I understand from a military perspective, you know, you want to desensitize people so that way it's easier and you don't have that ethical hang up on the battlefield. Mm. That is an ethical hang up in life and uh, something that I definitely stand against. Something that you couldn't get past. I, I just couldn't get past. I mean, yeah. it's different when you're shooting at a, a circle, a square, or even a silhouette. But when they dress them up to look Middle Eastern mm. um, and, and other cultured, um, that really struck a chord with me. I tried to seek help in the military and I was offered a call line, but beyond that, I wasn't really given any assistance. So it eventually just got to where I walked out, um, for my own sanity and safety. Wow. And, um, yeah, I have been happy ever since. <laughs> uh, I mean, again, yeah. uh, not trying to give any stolen valor. I don't call myself a veteran, mm -hmm. um, or anything of the sort, but, uh, Cause I definitely wanted to leave that in, in a past life, but, um, yeah, that was a very difficult thing for me to go through, especially again, not wanting to be there originally. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't my path in life. And then I eventually came home and, uh, figured things out on my own, uh, 2018 rolls around and, uh, that's when I left and, uh, you know, kind of considered myself ethically and morally, like with what I actually um, wanted in life, uh, which eventually led me towards more of an environmental approach with a lot of what I wear and do and, and consume. Yeah. And then that brought me into, you know, veganism. Yeah. So I, I, you know, from like an ethical and environmental perspective. Well, it's so interesting. But, like no, this, this whole journey that you're on right now, like is sure. like, I can see kind of these, these like seedling seedlings that were planted within kind of that military um that military backgrounds and when you were um attending this like it, it seemed like you're such an advocate for mental health mm -hmm. you're such an advocate for health and wellness as well and to you know taking care of the body and taking care of the mind and the brain and also the soul absolutely as well so like i can see kind of where this is all like stemming from as well yeah. and i also wonder like even before then like even before then sure. you know you felt that you were like 
you were feeling controlled. You were feeling that like you were kind of being led on a path that wasn't necessarily yours. Yeah. Um, like when was the time? Like it, it does sound like that was like a really strong story. Uh, the that was that was like the tipping point. Yeah. That was the climactic point for you to decide like sure. I want to make this my own journey. Mm -hmm. So you left. And so now like you are such a mental health advocate, yeah. like what's kind of your goal now in terms of moving forward? Sure. So um, in terms of what I do, uh, again, st sticking with the carving of my own path and trying to figure things out in that sense, um, I had gotten into personal training. Mm -hmm. I found that to be the most direct way I could um, affect people's lives for the better and trying to assist them, not just in terms of their health and wellness and eating and, and fitness, uh, but also from a spirituality perspective. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not to say that anyone should be necessarily religious one way or another and not to sure. advocate for anyone. Uh, I was raised evangelical Lutheran. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, conversion sense kind of stuck with me, if you will, in, in a sense. But for me, it's more of a lot of what I do is how can I affect change uh, individually and then scale from there. So I got mm. into personal training, nutrition coaching, always had an interest around nutrition um, and just how food kind of affects you. So moving forward from there, my, my idea, my path, my goal is just to take that to a larger scale. Sure. I, um, I, while have... <laughs> Excuse me. Well, I've been a personal trainer for over a year now. Um, I did pick up another job just to make a bit of extra money, but of course, right? It's <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. Better, uh, today's today's day and age. Um, but I am kind of taking it into more of a nomadic sense. Mm. I just got my my van. Yeah, I was gonna do the van talk about life, that. Right? I'm so excited for you on that. that sure. <laughs> Absolutely, we will. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, <laughs> so the idea is congratulations. By the way, thank yeah, you. totally. It's it's a it looks great. Scary leap, but uh, yeah. I'm excited to finish the kit. <laughs> um, get get life on the road and start and start traveling again. Mm. Just trying to take it my own way and uh, see where I can go and how many um, how many lives I can touch along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the goal to answer your question. It's just, yeah. uh, how can I take my work here and then expand it outwards, mm -hmm. um, you know, to a, to a nomadic sense. Yeah. When did you, so you pair mental health with physical fitness, where did you find that like spirituality again? Like did, was it kind of like, because I know you were raised evangelical. So yeah. like with my story, like I went from Catholic to Christian to completely atheist Absolutely. to then kind of like finding spirituality, you know, sans religion. And, you know, this, my, my kind of talk is, yeah, like I don't necessarily suggest like going into organized religion unless it's very helpful to you. Absolutely. Um, I kind of go with like to each their own. Uh, I think of very Unitarian or uh, Unitarianism and that approach, which is like all different kinds of religions and stuff. Okay. Um, but I'm curious, like, where did you find that spirituality and how did that come about? Did that come through the physical fitness or gotcha. what was that? So um yeah being raised evangelical lutheran um it's it's pretty hardcore in the sense of like you know catholicism in the same mm -hmm. sense uh we, we went to boy scouts together so catholic boy scout <laughs> very catholic <laughs> yeah. um but, always playing <laughs> yeah i so you know religion um dogmatic religion i should say was a very cornerstone of my life um everything was built around a hierarchy of of respecting those rules mm. um, and, st and sticking to that. Yeah. Something I'm sure you resonate with. Um, and not that rules are a bad thing, not that, you know, there's an issue, not, again, necessarily with religion, but that dogmatic thinking that regardless of the outcome, this is what you always come back to. Mm. And um, so that was something very tough to get out of. Um, I guess just a little bit on that story, if you don't mind me yeah. getting into it. My deconversion, if you will, started <laughs> when I was uh, 16. I was a sophomore in high school. Um, this was winter time, so December, uh, if you will. Um, just turned 16, sophomore in high school, and um, I just made a bunch of friends through school. Choir, like I, it's really when I started picking up my my current friend group and just 
the people that I still talk to today mm. um, and really trying to find more or less my personality outside of my family. And um, so I was a late bloomer in that sense. Mm. And uh, religion came up at the, at the lunch table and every one of them, as we're going down the line, uh, were saying, oh, I'm an atheist, I'm an atheist, I'm an atheist, I'm agnostic, I'm an atheist. And it got to me, I'm like, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a Lutheran. Um, and everyone's like, oh, that's cool, yeah. But for me, internally, I'm like, oh my God, my friends are going to hell. Oh. And that broke me. I thought, this is terrifying. I'm get, I mean, I have my friends now, but they're not going to get to go to heaven with me. I, start, I teared up. I started crying like as we're walking into the lunch line and like wiping away tears. I mean, it sounds dramatic, in it, but, but that's the truth of it. That's the truth of yeah. it. And um, it, was, it, was a, it was a moment where for myself, I started questioning, you know, why, why is there this uh, dichotomy? Why is it, you know, believe heaven, don't believe hell. And um, mm. I, I started looking more into that and became more educated in the sense of anti-theistic. So uh, while I was atheist or converting atheism, deconverting atheism, if you will, mm. um, it was anti-theistic. No mm. religion is good religion. And so I held that with me. And not to say that that's a reason for my depression, but I definitely had a or in my in my suicidal tendencies through the military, but I lacked a I lacked a guidance, if you will. Yeah. Like a heart guidance. Um and uh just didn't really have anything I was necessarily like living for. Um and that's again not to say that you can't find you know some spiritual meaning as as an atheist, but um that definitely wasn't my case, especially with how I was raised. Um, my nurture versus nature, if you will, my, my nurture was very, uh, you know, spiritual heavy. And mm. so growing up being around religion, I loved religious studies and got really good at arguing against it. And that kind of fueled mm. that fire, um, you know, and just finding those inconsistencies, seeing where the Bible tends to come from who wrote the Bible or necessarily where those stories come from and just watching it evolve over time. And, um, that kind of fueled that fire against it. But, um, 2018 after leaving the military, I tried psychedelics and, um, not to be pro drug use, uh, or necessarily pro psychedelic use, but, I did so again with intention. And it was more of yeah. not trying to party off of LSD or anything. It's no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm taking a psychoactive shrimp, psych, um, psilocybin, excuse me. Um, and the idea was, I'm gonna go into this and kind of just wonder, go into it with curiosity, yeah. and stepping into it with that curious mind, um, and knowing going into it as well, um, not completely blank, knowing that, you know, there are spiritual experiences that happen or it physically rewires neuroactivity in the brain. Yeah. Um, and how like different psychoactives have helped with addiction and like even from heroin to cigarettes to alcohol addiction, it can rewire you same day. And just knowing that, okay, there is some form of chemical rewiring in the brain, electrical rewiring in the brain, mm -hmm. um, stepping into this, just saying, I'm curious what I'm going to see. I'm curious how I'm going to feel. And that experience was, uh, was beautiful for the most part. Uh, there was like a little scary hole. And, and once you kind of start to feel that fear, it grows, if you will. Mm -hmm. Once you, once you give it attention, then that attention will widen that that experience right yeah um metastasizing exactly exactly and, and the same would go for anything when you're sober mm -hmm. um, the more attention that you give something the more you're going to feed it right mm -hmm. but it's exaggerated that's very it's kind of yeah. a form of alcohol as well in terms yeah. of drinking it's to metastas metastasize like what is already there but but to continue on the shroom trip what did you see oh what did i see yeah um, absolutely well, I definitely suggest if you, <laughs> if you try it, uh, it's some Miyazaki films. Oh, oh my God. Absolutely. It was, you felt like you were in it. Which one? Oh, did you see? We, we started with Princess Mononoke. Oh, you went, you kept going through the catalog? 
I, we just, also Mononoke, like come on, that's a great one that's too. A great one. The blood scene was was cool because it was before things started feeling weird. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay, sure. Yeah, right? of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think it kind of did set a stage, and I'll explain that in a moment too. But yeah, we started with Mon- Princess Mononoke, and then finished with Howl's Moving Castle. Gosh, yes. Beautiful. Uh, oh the my god. That, the 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 bomb scene was cool, but. Again, you just feel like you're in the scene. Mm. Um, it's definitely an immersive experience. Highly suggest Hayao Miyazaki, uh, head <laughs> of Studio was... Ghibli. Yeah. Definitely, like all of, like his whole catalog, and oh. make sure that it's directed by Hayao Miyazaki. There's some that are not directed by Hayao Miyazaki that are just uh, a little rough, but <laughs> absolutely. And even they're all pretty consistent, except for one. <laughs> There's one that I like. Nope. Yeah, and, that's cool. That's such a great like thing to watch. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and and technically not get not Ghibli or Miyazaki. I, I want to say I'll have to double check this one later. But uh, Mary's Mary and the Witch's Flower. That's one I really want to see. Kind of going that. Yeah. Vibe. If you haven't seen that one, it's it's a beautiful one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But regardless, um, so yeah, we started with that, and I went into this with a blank notebook and a, and a nice. black pen. Nice. And so just to kind of like record and and just know as I'm going into this again, stepping into it with the curiosity. Yeah. And uh, it was really interesting uh, as I'm looking at the spack on the ceiling, the you know, the just the, the splatter. I'm mm. like, spin. Um, by the way, for reference, I took 3.5 grams. Um, so normally anything less than two is considered, you know, a little smaller, you know, Three to five is generally when you're going to start seeing and feeling things and having a bit more of a trip, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and then anything over five, I believe, is considered heroic dose and it's just going to last you a while. Yeah. Um, again, not to be very pro druggy, but just to give you some some background for safety purposes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm watching the spinning spackle. I am writing my notebook with, again, a black ink pen. But as I'm looking at it, I'm getting this red, green, and blue tricolor effects off of it as I'm writing, seeing those three colors with a black pen. It was really interesting to see that. But as I'm going through the pages of the notebook, um, oh, actually, before I get into that one. Yeah. (laughs) Again, not to just... It's okay. We're, yeah, we're here. We're here, right? We we got it once. Uh, if if you're going to take it, please could take it in a controlled environment. I don't necessarily trust. Yes, and I don't can you know uh, what I don't. don't. We don't condone the use of drugs. But if you do, it's to each their own. <laughs> I have done shrooms before. Um, I will probably do it again. Okay. Um, but yeah, just as to iterate. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about. It. I was watching Stalker by Andre Tarkovsky, which is. Uh, a very spiritual film, okay. and if you do that on shrooms, that one's really wild. So, <laughs> uh, I guess bucket list item now. Sure, absolutely, sure, right? Um, Maybe in the van. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. But please keep it in a conscious and controlled environment if you're going to do it. Um, otherwise, what? I mean, I don't even know what the rules are around that. So, check your state's uh, legality around it. Some states have uh, legal recreational use, uh, and if it's not legal. Um, I don't know how you feel about your podcast, but fuck the state. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, anyways, um, <laughs> I digress. Cut that if you want. Um, okay, so here we are yeah. in the apartment. We're watching Miyazaki films, and um, I don't know if this is an effect because of Miyazaki and his art style and mm. his flowy, artsy sense of it, and the bright colors, and very spiritual as well. Very spiritual, the mm. deeper messages. There's layers to it. But it felt as though the entire room was on a ship. And not to say that we're like rocking back and forth, Hmm. but that the walls and everything was under deck and that the outside didn't exist. Or at the very least, it was just empty space. It was nighttime, Hmm. so it was just dark outside. And um, it was really interesting because I was there tripping with another friend, but then each of us had somebody who was kind of trip sitting us. Uh, and then they had, um, they had their dog and then two black hats. Yes. Great vibe. It was an Aussie. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. Aussie. <laughs> uh, love his name is Zuko. Stop. I know. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but, yeah. So Zuko was beautiful, but, and the cats were amazing. Io, um, Io and 
the other cat. I feel so bad. Got it. Sorry if they see this. I doubt it, but I'm the sorry if they see it. The cats, I mean, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. But regardless, um, yeah, you're good. You're good. It's really interesting because whereas I saw my friends as they were and I knew their names, I more or less forgot their i their ego. Right? I forgot the right. Oh name. yeah. I assigned them new names. Uh, a friend of mine who's in control of like the music and kind of what's going on, I named him Boombox. Uh, my other <laughs> friend who was kind of, I've always seen them as a stoic leader, but also kind of a loner, if you will. Uh, they were captain. Like we were on a ship. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so everyone kind of got their own little name or title, if you will, Yeah. Uh, in my head. And I remember writing them all down and everything was so bright and beautiful. Uh, I'm doing this weird stance. And it almost felt like I'm, I'm standing there in the kitchen like this, right? I've got, I'm standing on one foot, just bouncing, just watching it around. And it felt as though, and this was kind of that first touch for the, po- for the yeah. podcast listeners. That was a tree pose. I was doing like a tree pose. <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen, everyone's kind of panicked. They're making the food or doing whatever. And um, I'm just watching everything. And um, this is my first feeling, if you will, as the watcher as the experiencer uh as as though i was simply an entity looking through this body watching everything happen Mm. um and it felt lonely at first but it then felt like no i get to watch and experience a new show a show this um movie this stage of reality and all of my friends aren't real Mm. but they're merely Figments through my vision, and I'm just enjoying it. I'm mm. I'm Christ through the screen, watching through. And um, I was though I, I took it as though I was like I don't want to sound you know God complex, but it was as though I am the entity watching through, experiencing reality. Yeah, and that was separating, if you will. And at that point. I started noticing those those feelings of loneliness and then i tapped into that darkness it felt as though i couldn't necessarily see a black hole but i felt a black hole interesting um you think that was like maybe the ego fighting back a little bit i think i think it was yeah it was. or at least um not necessarily ego as the issue but mm. attachment as the issue ah and we'll i'll i'll touch on that of course of course because um, course. that's further in the growth uh, as i as i'm learning more and more mm-hmm. i returned to my notebook and I'm sinking into the couch. And I remember being so disconnected that I'm writing in the notebook. I can't turn my eyes to see it. Um, but the moment that I do, the black ink, and I remember writing this, the black ink started dripping blood. I'm like the black ink was turning red and like I'm seeing blood on this on the page. Um, and that was scary. It yeah. was worry. And I remember uh, writing help from the page help i can't speak and like i'm just silent i'm sitting with myself until um captain comes by and they come forward they see me they see that they see that i'm struggling um and as soon as they get near me because of that presence of always being um more or less a other person right that they like to kind of be off on their own they're they kind of have a more uh, I don't want to say dark, but um, grounded energy, maybe kind of okay. they're, they're grounded, but also have a lot of their own struggles. They sure. Have to, but okay. recognizing that I saw this aura of darkness around them. They were oh. scary, like they were enshrouded in shadow. And, Interesting. Right. And so freaked me out. Yeah. And uh, so I eventually said, like, please go away. And they respected that. They they knew. They yeah. and they were experienced, so like they didn't take it to heart, thankfully. Yeah. But um love you. <laughs> um, but they did they did leave. And eventually I found the strength to stand up, walk into the bedroom, and lay down on their bed, and then just sit there to finish the trip out. I yeah. had two hours left and I'm just staring into infinity. And it was really interesting. You never you know how when like you're staring at the top of a room and you see the two corners of the room. Mm. Right. What I what I really noticed about this, I'm seeing the two corners of the room and <laughs> uh instead of seeing them go in as though you're inside of a box, it looked as though they were protruding out 
Oh, and the walls went away. So maybe like um, like a cube that you're looking at, one of those optical illusion cubes exactly. with the lines that you can like f switch yeah. perspective. The perspective. Cool. Switch. That's really cool. And while that was freaky in the moment, and I'm just laying there and I'm talking to Captain, That's they, nature. they came in and, and you know were sitting with me and helped me wait it out. Yeah. I'm talking with them, but the perspective shifted and I mm. couldn't look away from that. Um, and actually looking back, I never considered it. That was a foreshadowing for myself. My perspectives Ooh. shifted. Um, I, I, wasn't, that. I wasn't vegan at this point. I okay. um, was still kind of like figuring life out, if you will, after again, leaving the military and wondering what I'm going to do. Mm. Perspective shifted. And uh, that's, yeah, actually, that's really cool. Um, but really cool. Regardless, yeah. um, you know, eventually came out of it. Uh, there was some, there was some leftover pizza. <laughs> Got to eat a little bit. You sure. get this really weird stomach feeling. Yeah, right? totally. You know, you know, you get the weird stomach feeling, but you're hungry. So mm -hmm. then, you know, one eat something and we're calming it down. It's like two in the morning at this point, um, two or three in the morning. So yeah, we, we had a great time. Nice. Beautiful trip. Um, but um, whereas I'm not necessarily a psychonaut, or at least I wasn't, and you know, something I definitely wouldn't mind coming back to, um, Terrence McKenna said, when you get the message, hang up the phone. Aha, uh -huh. yep, right? very, very and good. So stepping into this with curiosity. It's not something that you should microdose every single day unless it's like prescribed. Um, and definitely like something that you do in a conscious environment as a tool to be utilized to find a deeper perspective more, For sure. more as a, um, a retreat rather than, um, your everyday right. going to the gym or something like that. It's not quite like that. <laughs> not true. Yeah. Attention. No, I would not. Yeah. Wow. Just staring at the weights. Like, well, maybe I would try for it. No. <laughs> it may be an interesting, <laughs> yeah. to say the least. we'll go to the uh, Wiley. It's <laughs> we'll go to the Wiley. 24 right? hours, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, well, so go into, um, like yeah. how that experience shifted that perspective. And then you started going into something a little bit more spiritual. So you went to yeah. anti-theistic into what? Yeah. So, so again, perspective shifted, um, mm -hmm. at the time, yeah. Anti-theistic, but still, you know, kind of, questioning at that point what there could be what there could not be very materialistic in my worldview sure. and um so having that experience of outside looking in um or inside looking out mm. uh, totally. just to just to keep it open um that set me down this path of what ifs and so looking into more eastern religions Mm. Um, and, and philosophies. I really started getting more into Alan Watts. Yeah. Uh, really found his philosophy, or at least learning more or less about his his descriptions of Eastern, Eastern philosophies. Um, and uh, just kind of taking that in stride and learning more about the Taoism uh, and Buddhism uh, around that. Um, so, from that point on, I had an open approach to not necessarily religion, but spirituality. Mm. It was the sense that, okay, if, because I'm still holding on to a lot of anti-theistic principles at this point, right? Okay. If there's a God um, who is all knowing and all good, then he's not all powerful because if he were all good, there would be no evil, mm. right? Or if he's all powerful and all good, then he doesn't know evil exists mm. or, <laughs> right. Or yeah. if he is all powerful and all knowing, then he's not all good mm. because then he allows evil to exist. Right. So it's mm. from that, from the three points of that, um, Western view on God, uh, or at least Yahweh in that sense, um, the Abrahamic God, um, he's described as all three and that itself was the contradiction that kind of kept me away from that, um, that Western view mm. of religion and God. Totally. So taking it out of the dogmatic sense of this is it, what is written, do it, do and believe what is written. Right. Right. It's the sense of what else could there be? Right. Because that, you know, could be create a false dichotomy. You know, if there's, if there is a God, is there multiple gods? If there's not a God, is it just spirits? Is it just ghosts? Is there nothing? Right. So there's multiple different ways you could look at it. And um, 
as I'm discovering more and more about Eastern philosophy and, under, and my understanding of Buddhism as not necessarily a dogmatic religion, dogmatic meaning that there's religious texts that you follow, right? Mm-hmm. There's not necessarily that per se, um, but there are resources that you should definitely at least follow, right? That uh, Eightfold Path as... Um, as the the buddha would say it's those guide posts. Uh, it's like guide it's posts, it's right? more guideposts i i remember like reading that um in like text it's just being like it's like we are we are not like yeah. prescribing something to you this is a guidepost exactly this is we plant the sign we write this way and Locking you can the middle path yes exactly yeah. again just again path coming west. back to the the blinders the 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 the, the path there and trying to figure out my way through mm-hmm. um and uh, discovering that and recognizing that there's Buddhist principles that I could follow without necessarily believing anything, I started leaning down in, into that path. And that got me into more ethical thinking, thinking outside of myself and my own experience, and really building empathy, which mm-hmm. I think uh, was key for a lot of my relationships and my relationship to self uh, and to the planet. Um, one beautiful thing in my religious study, though, um, was learning of a character called Karen Armstrong, Dr. Karen Armstrong. She's mm. a beautiful person and uh, recently came out with a book called Sacred Nature. Um, and just to you know, quote the book and, and to kind of touch on what she explains in this is this idea of um, logos versus mythos, right? So the Greeks were beautiful at both right Mm -hmm. there was the logos the logic Mm -hmm. right it was the mathematics the philosophy it was um you know the the hard science if you will but the mythos right we think of the greek myths as just stories and poems and and um the odyssey right if you will like um homer's odyssey yeah the, the sense that these are just works of art Mm. But if you think of mythos as another way to convey a message, another way to convey something that logic cannot, you can utilize both. That there's a deeper meaning, that there's a story or some message can come out of it. Like, for instance, uh, with the Odyssey, since we're all in that, Karen Armstrong portrays the message that in the Odyssey, how do you convey the emotion? that when um, they're returning back from their voyage and Odysseus is asleep in his cabin and the crew were wondering, ooh, he's got this this bag, but we don't know what's in the back. We're not allowed to open it. Uh, They're almost home. They're a day's journey away, right? After a super long voyage of years. And so the crew were like, you know what? He's probably hiding treasure from us. And they open the bag and it's the eastern winds. So when they open the bag, the winds blow onto the sail and it blows them all the way back to the beginning of their journey. <laughs> so when it, it's funny, mm-hmm. when it yeah. just wakes up, how do you convey the message of remorse, regret, depression, and anger all in the same setting? Mm. And so taking mythos to then convey messages that the, that the logos cannot, how has mythos been portrayed in religion? Mm. Is religion just another sense of mythos and is God a conveyance of something other, right? Mm. So of course, from my own perspectives, uh, if you don't mind me sharing, yeah, I now have a sense that God, or at the very least, the idea of God is collective human consciousness. Mm. I mean, if, I, if I'm gonna go a little off the wall here, right? Sure. But collective human consciousness, not necessarily as um, as Atman from you know from from Hinduism or Brahman, uh, I believe is the I believe is the correct term, um, and also not to say that it's necessarily as you know Pranayama, the the separate consciousness that you know breaks itself apart and you know has each individual life and experience of all living things through all of history and all time. I like to consider that as 
we are the Godhead, and Alan Watts actually touches on this, we are the Godhead experiencing different perspectives throughout all of time. And the moment that we all can share a perspective, or at least have a universal empathy, mm. when we can build that with each other, is the moment that we reach Godhood in the sense that we can then, I don't want to say just move mountains, but we can through not through a collective consciousness of all of us thinking the same but we're all parts of the same whole mm. thinking about not just humanity but um all life as the sense of of uh, a single being drops right? from the proverbial right. bucket right mm. I, it's um when when i if you fall and i pick you back up it's not necessarily like a thank you because when one hand pulls a splinter out of the other this hand doesn't thank them, right? It's just one of the whole. It's just something that you do. Mm. You don't necessarily do it because you're expecting to thank you. You do it because it's just the right thing to do. Mm. And it hurts when you recognize that empathy in something else. Mm. Um, and so having that perspective has really fortified and reassured me of what I do in building mental health and fitness and nutrition and um, you know my, my ethics around animal rights and... and yeah. Why I'm a why I'm a communist? <laughs> I mean, genuinely, <laughs> why I'm more pro people rather than pro business or corporation? Why I mm. think that um, you know the more we can help each other in the in the sense of not just our intake of food and consumption, but also through housing and food uh, has always been important to me. Yeah, um, and and kind of fortifying that and leading me into the industry that I am in, not just in. Uh, personal coaching and, and that, but also uh, whenever I get the chance of of um, either needing a few extra bucks or at the very least volunteering, I, I work with nonprofits. So, um, you know, being at the Y, it's a nonprofit organization. I coach through the Y and I do that, uh, not necessarily for their Christian views, but because they're a nonprofit and that's yeah. something that I can get into. Right. Absolutely. But also with another one in Lincoln County, uh, Together We Grow. Yeah, you know, they have community gardens and have free picks where anyone, regardless of their demographic or where they're from or who they are, can go harvest their own fresh produce yeah. for free and then take it with them. Um, so I worked with that. I did um, just to wrap up. I was their power of plants director. So I went to the elementary schools yeah. and taught kids how to garden, trying to decentralize away from bigger corporations where they're jacking the prices. Mm -hmm teaching people how to grow their own food. Yeah. And then now where I'm at um, uh, with uh, the Lincoln County Coalition for Housing and trying to secure housing for people who are struggling with homelessness, mm. experiencing homelessness. Um, so that's, you know, again, just trying to find ways that not just through my work of fitness and nutrition, but having that drive of bettering humanity as much as I can in my free time yeah outside of that yeah so and i can notice that too like i really notice like your ability to keep fighting for that collective and that like people you know come into the space and they're so excited to be working with you they're excited to be entering in and to finding some way some form to uh work on them and you're able to kind of like approach that in such a beautiful way and spiritual way too like conscious like it feels like exciting it feels grounded and you know and i can notice that too with all the things that you've been working on and the way that you live your life thank you as well like, i mean you live by example you really do you kind of go through and you are you're acting on all the principles that we're talking about here but you're actually living it you know yeah. you're not just somebody you know because and also we're always working on ourselves absolutely we're also constantly you know we're, we're coming up with our financial hardships i mean we you and i have talked about this constantly it's like yeah like like fuck the system like it's it's it sucks <laughs> it's, it's tough but i mean this is something that we talk about constantly which is it's like you know it's it's capitalism it, but also like we're trying to work with human beings and we're trying to connect and to build that connection and to build that spirituality amongst other people but also like the health and the fitness and the wellness and the mental aspect of things because we care about these people absolutely uh, because we're we're trying to get in tune with these people so 
Yeah, like I, I, I can see that, and I also really, really appreciate that a lot. I appreciate yeah. you saying so. So thank you for, um, you know, putting that out. Uh, I, it's, I, I don't want to say it's a thankless job um, because I definitely feel that myself. I, it's, I don't want to say, um, you know, helping people for the sake of, you know, getting something out of it, but mm -hmm. truly, it, it helps reaffirm myself into feeling better and building my own mental health when I know yeah. that I can. Uh, so thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. You're building a lot of really wonderful things, which is like the, very exciting. And now you're going to be building out a van yes. as well so that you can travel around and now you can yeah. uh, um, convert people to your cult. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, my, my, my communist vegan. That's it. Cult, right? Yeah, that's it. Space cult. <laughs> In space. Right. <laughs> um, but it, it definitely is, you know, speaking to my own experience. I mm -hmm. want to speak on something that um, I myself have not gone through. Um, I don't want to just totally. something here. Um, you know, I want it to be as authentic as possible. Um, it's why my, my, I don't know if I can curse. My crazy ass is, uh, <laughs> you know, into ultras and, and messing with that now. So I've got my, my, uh, neck, yeah. my second 50 K and then building from there, my second 50 K coming up in uh, less than a month. Ooh. And then, uh, I know. Then, uh, being I just signed up for my first marathon. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. That's Which one? Uh, Which one? Columbus City Marathon. Cap uh, no. Cap City's coming up. Columbus. No, it's a nationwide health Cap in Cap October. Cap yes. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So I got time to train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got <laughs> plenty of time. You can easily fit another one. In. Oh, we'll work on it. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about just one at a time. We one at a time. <laughs> I got a lot to do. Summer Sasquatch with me. 50k jeez oh, please come on Walk let it. me we'll figure it out all right we'll talk about it i'll pray about it <laughs> i'll pray about it we'll pray about it we'll meditate on it yeah. yeah 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 oh my gosh um but yeah no just being able to take the van out into new spaces yeah uh, hitting new trails um not just on the feet but on the mountain bike yeah. and getting out of ohio getting out of ohio <laughs> nothing wrong with ohio I want to leave. <laughs> I want to see more. Uh, and I want to. I want to see more people and more cultures. Um, so I've got this bucket list item of taking a van uh, from Anchorage, Alaska, down the west coast to Panama, uh, and then seeing where that goes. Possibly continuing all the way down to the tip of Argentina. We'll see. Um, oh, nice. But just really, at least that first bit on the North American continent. Um, you know, just traveling the west coast all the way down. So mm. uh, that's kind of like the the big journey if you will uh, but the first trip is to the pnw out to vancouver island uh seattle washington oh nice banff all that area up there. yeah so yeah yeah that's the, yeah that's the first trip out there um but yeah hitting a lot of trails doing doing more mountain biking more trail running yeah yeah so that's super cool you also like the support for nature to to reconnect Absolutely. and to delve in Absolutely. like I, I really think is a part of that practice but i want to kind of like bring this to a close as sure. well um well first off like in terms of like what you're working on and uh, your goals as well like what are what what is something how can we find you in sure. terms of like social media websites um and we'll post things down below as well awesome. but thank you yeah um okay so my uh my most active area is instagram ben stamper coaching just separated by underscores um of course you can just find me at ben stamper um and then of course my website um i think it's currently down at the moment um i okay. took a break on that one while i was kind of figuring things out with the van mm. um, that will be back up soon as well it's been stampercoaching.com um and then yeah just current projects i am looking into doing more um personal training and nutrition coaching not just in the physical sense but moving more towards being online yeah to support that nomadic life uh, but then i will be starting my own newsletter here soon writing blog especially to uh, start promoting more of that that van life and just sharing my experience again speaking to that awesome um, so yeah yeah that's where you can find me um so find me down below in the description <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And also in terms of like, if somebody was listening to this podcast right now, um, sure. and they all they want to do is just they want to start something. Start. They want to begin a movement practice. They or they want to begin um, a spiritual practice. Like let's let's go in these two categories. Let's okay. and maybe can you maybe you can combine it. I'm not sure. But in terms of somebody who wants to start doing a movement practice, where should they start? How should they start? Where should they look into? Um, what is some best 
key advice for sure. them. Sure. Okay. Well, speaking to you then, um, if you don't mind, yeah. Um, to start a movement practice and to begin your spiritual journey, do drugs, run long distances. No, <laughs> get it. Uh, nice. <laughs> nice delivery, man. <laughs> Solid. Solid. So while there is a lot of, of, um, a lot of paths you can take in terms of movement, uh, in terms of nutrition, um, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of misinformation out there. Mm. The best thing to do, um, I don't want to just say just start, but genuinely try walking, getting yourself moving and getting at least in the habit of saving space for yourself throughout the day. Um, for, for your optimal movement, um, it's, you know, Dr. Michael Greger, uh, FACLM, uh, beautiful nutrition leader, if you will. Um, his suggestion in terms of optimal health would be like um, 90 minutes of moderate intensity or 40 minutes of vigorous intensity a day. Um, and while that's great, what I believe would be most successful for people, start with 30 minutes. It's it's a big time commitment if you're going to do that daily. So 20, 30 minutes, just getting in the habit of moving. Um, from there, while YouTube University is a beautiful thing, um, <laughs> you could learn a lot from YouTube itself. Um, I would, at the very least, go into the gym and take a tour. Um, any any gym that you go to would be more than happy to give you a tour of the facility. Excuse me, a tour of the facility and to um, at least learn about where machines are, where the weights are, and how to move. Mm. Um, but again do the best you can with your own body weight. Um, you can never go wrong with push-ups, pull-ups, um, sit-ups, crunches, walking, hiking, uh, get on some trails, take, take off the shoes, try some barefoot, experiment. Um, the, the best advice I can offer is just going into anything that you do with curiosity mm. um, and never lose sight of that. The more curious you are, uh, the more willing you are to learn and just never expect yourself to be the best at anything and just go into it with this, with, with this curiosity mindset. Um, that's like yeah. the best advice I could give. In that. That's great. Walk, uh, walk daily, be curious. Yeah. Well, I, and also like, I, I feel like that's kind of similar to like, so if you were inspired by the, the spiritual aspect of this conversation, I, it feels kind of similar to how you might start like a spiritual practice, but like, what might your advice be for those who are looking for, who are curious also Absolutely. to kind of build a, I mean, something that's that's either their own work uh, their own spiritual journey and for those who are stepping into one or someone who's already on the path or something like that like what might be your advice sure. for them sure so yeah walking and being curious is a great way to a spiritual practice too if that's something you're uh wanting to explore and what i mean by that is and, and just to kind of get to the reason why um and this has been big with my coaching is i like to dive more into the why absolutely yeah uh, of course right like why are you doing this walking is a binaural movement meaning that you're moving from side to side and what that does is it not only regulates your blood pressure and uh, your blood flow but also your breathing and your mental activity so you're doing this that's going to automatically calm you down so whereas you know if you want to walk and meditate and do yoga uh, and journal and do all these beautiful mental health practices every day i can be a lot at the start so to initialize that begin with the walk um set a time for yourself and then during that walk focus on your breath um everything would return back to the breath I, and and i i believe that if you're going to try that that spiritual practice um focus on the breath the mind will travel you're going to start thinking about what you did that day what's to come what's happening next week be here now uh ram das right just be present with it if you feel your mind traveling off just return to the breath how it feels in the chest at the nose <sighs> that inhale right and that would be a great starting place because once you can open up curiosity, begin that breath work, then I would say resources to go from there um, is just with that curiosity, uh, maintaining an open mind. With an open mind and not necessarily attaching yourself, um, whereas you know a Buddhist would say attachment is suffering, um, it's truly that. And 
you know, the more attached you are to an idea or an outcome, if that doesn't happen, which most of the time it won't, you will suffer. You'll feel some sort of disappointment or agitation or frustration from that. Mm. So unattach and explore. That's the best advice I can give, especially when it comes to spirituality. I'm not here to tell you to um, look into Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, Christianity, right. uh, Islam, or anything of the sort. I am simply saying be curious and unattach. Mm. So yeah. that's that's what I would suggest. That's really wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on also. And Appreciate thank you so much for oh, being my God. first first conversation. Uh, well, that, was a, that was a wonderful conversation. And you're, you're also a fantastic conversationalist too. So yeah. Thank you. Really, really wonderful to hear your journey a little bit and to also like where you came from for and sure. how far you've come as well. I mean, we've come a long way <laughs> from high school. I've grown so much since I've known you. Uh, and you've... you've certainly blossomed ah beautiful you too brother you too yeah sir all right thank you so much uh we'll close this out appreciate you coming on to the podcast and um yeah yo so we'll post this um eventually you'll see where this goes um probably to youtube um we'll find you on spotify apple podcasts and wherever you get your podcasts i'll be trying to get to every single podcast thing there's a lot out there yeah, check so, him out he's an amazing uh, character his <laughs> newsletter is fantastic it's a beautiful read three times a week yeah three times yeah, a week now three times a week, times now, a week. So. and maybe some guest writing oh, to come big maybe I'm yeah always open <laughs> cool all right appreciate it Thanks, man. i hope you enjoyed that podcast if you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter you can go to mattpiper.org and you can subscribe there And if you'd become a premium member, we're also going to be putting out podcasts far earlier for you uh, that you can explore on the web and listen on the web browser as well. And also, if you subscribe as a premium member, you'll be receiving three newsletters weekly about craft, spirituality, as well as health and wellness, which I've titled as Mind and Motion. I'll be giving you guideposts. I'll be giving you my curiosities for the week. And I'll be giving you a little bit about what it is that I'm working on as well. I hope to see you there. Much love today and every day. Matt Piper.